Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. We are live today on Sunday, June 19th, and my guest is Damian Zivkovich, the president of the Institute of Exponential Sciences, which is an international transhumanist think tank and education institute comprised of a group of transhumanism-oriented scientists, professionals, students, journalists, and entrepreneurs interested in the interdisciplinary approach to advancing exponential technologies and promoting techno-positive thought. He is also an entrepreneur and a student of artificial intelligence and innovation sciences and management at the University of Utrecht. Damien and the Institute of Exponential Sciences have been involved in several endeavors, such as organizing lectures on exponential sciences, interviewing experts such as Aubrey de Grey, and joining several of my futurism panels, as well as Spreading Death is Wrong, my illustrated children's book on indefinite life extension in the Netherlands. Damien is a strong proponent of healthy life extension and cognitive augmentation. His interests include hyperreality, morphological freedom advocacy, postgenderism, and hypermodernism. He is currently working on his ambition of raising enough capital to make a real difference in life extension and transhumanist thought. So on this last point, uh, today Damien will be talking to us about a forthcoming event on July 9th in Utrecht uh, called the Designing New Advances or DNA Gene Therapies Congress. So with that introduction, Damien, uh, could you mm -hmm. please give us an overview of the DNA Congress, what it will involve, uh, what is distinctive about it? Thank you very much for having me, Gennady. And uh, when I look at the, the field of gene therapies in humans, this is a very new, exciting field of study where there is very little formal cohesion in the networking venues, in the, like, the whole field isn't on the map yet. And what I want to do with uh, the DNA Congress is like create a mainstream event where great scientists, business people, and all other actors involved in the interesting future that we are heading towards with gene therapies are involved in. Excellent. So it's going to be a one day event uh what mm -hmm. will be the venue it will be in the raza uh, hall in utrecht which is a hall where uh, all kinds of different events can be held and we will have uh use of this venue for that there will be um, a place where people can have drinks and network uh, have something to eat and of course, there will be halls for the talks by your uh, speakers. Mm -hmm. And well, it will be in Utrecht, which is one of the most central cities in the Netherlands. So we hope that that will be enough incentive to make sure that a lot of people want to come. For those who want to attend in person, uh, what will be the capacity of the event? How many people will the hall be able to fit? The maximum capacity of the hall will be 250 people. That's a quite decent size of audience. And mm -hmm. uh, based on your event description, you will have five speakers. Uh, will they all be presenting sequentially so that everybody could hear every speaker? Yes, they will be, there will be a program where uh, we will start off with Olivier Medvedic, who is a uh, director at Genspace, and um, he will be followed by Aubrey de Grey, who will be followed by Tatiana Kostikova, or own bioethicist. And after that, we will give the word to Elizabeth Parrish, CEO of BioViva Sciences, and finally Keith Comito, who is the founder of the LEAF, the Life Extension Advocacy. Uh... Wait. Life Extension Advocacy Foundation. Yes, I, 
I know yes, Keith, correct. Uh, he has a very innovative approach to crowdfunding via lifespan.io, where he has a crowdfunding yes. platform devoted solely to uh, longevity research projects. So that's a resource that I encourage people to visit and I encourage people to contribute to the crowdfunding campaigns that are currently ongoing. So Damien, I'm impressed that you have been able to gather several very high caliber speakers uh, and an international range of speakers as well. So uh, how was it, for instance, that you were able to uh, reach out to Aubrey de Grey and persuade him to uh, come to Utrecht for this conference? Well, I have actually been um, uh, con uh, talking with Aubrey de Grey over the email for several years now, I think. It first started with an interview I did with him for the Naked But Safe magazine. And last year, we also wanted to organize an event similar to this, where I also invited Aubrey, but sadly, due to financial concerns and, well, there just wasn't enough time at the moment, or at that time, to organize it well, so we had to cancel it. And, well, I sent him an email, like, seven months ago, and I was delighted that he was interested in talking at our event. Excellent. And you also have uh, Elizabeth Parrish of BioViva, whose uh, recent noteworthy accomplishment has been that she actually had gene therapy performed on herself, and uh, mm -hmm. results have shown a lengthening of her telomeres. Uh, she also uh, at least states that she has become biologically younger and experienced uh, symptoms of being biologically younger. So uh, how were you able to uh, get her on your uh, list of speakers? Well, I've been talking to Elizabeth Parrish for a while now. I believe I actually met her through one of our earlier panel discussions. Could that be right? Uh, yes, we did have a panel discussion uh, for uh, our interna uh, International Longevity Day, uh, where she actually made the announcement, uh, the first announcement in any venue of BioViva actually having done a gene therapy trial on a patient. At the time, she didn't say that that patient was Elizabeth Parrish, but nonetheless, I, I was honored to have her on the panel uh, and have her make that disclosure there. Yeah, since then, I just kind of talked to her more, and I just found that we had a lot of things in common about what we were interested in, and we just talked about all kinds of stuff, and then it just came naturally to also invite her to the Congress. Ah, very good. So, what would you say will be the distinctive focus of each of the speakers? And uh, you can be as general or as specific as you would like. The subject will be gene therapies. What would you say these speakers and this venue will bring to the discussion that hasn't been uh, ventured into previously? Well, I think that um, the way that the whole event is constructed is uh, done to really um, ease people into the idea of life, life extension because we first start out with a very general approach to gene therapies. We don't start off about life extension. We just explore the radical new innovations uh, done the past few years about CRISPR, Cas9 technologies, and we just give an old. So, like, we don't start with pushing an agenda. Mm -hmm. And then after we've, like, set out this framework, we are going to 
uh, engage people to actually think about what could be possible with, the, with these technologies if we choose to embrace them. And there, Aubrey can tell us about how we could maybe, you know, stay younger for a much longer time. And once Aubrey has done this, or bioethicists can explain the ethical sides of things to people. Because a lot of people, of course, are hesitant to great changes in how the human body works. So we actually have a trained philosopher who has been working in ethics for a very long time to reassure people that this is not some kind of monstrous, creepy science, that this is actually something that's going to help people and change things for the better. And once that's explained, we want to, you know, show people what's out there in the corporate world and in the NGO world by letting Elizabeth and Keith talk about their projects. Excellent. So it's a, let, let's say, incremental introduction to uh, gene therapies and life extension, starting with technological innovations that are happening now or are poised to happen in the future and then their broader implications for how humans could live longer and healthier lives and mm -hmm. uh, then the uh, philosophical justifications the uh, philosophical arguments for why that would be desirable uh, i think that's an intriguing sequence and i agree that could bring more people to understand the potential of these technologies and embrace them in a manner that perhaps has been difficult to get uh, large segments of the public to accept up to now. So I wish you all the best with that. Now, uh, let's say uh, various individuals want to uh, hear the speakers and uh, even provide some input into the conversation, but they're not able to physically be present at the event. Will there be some way for them to view the speeches, uh, to ask questions, to contribute to the conversation? Well, of course, we want to have the entire event filmed and professionally produced. And we are planning to do that and release the, the final versions of this online eventually. But one of our problems is the funding because to actually do this, it does cost money. And we, we are very happy with the people who have donated at our fundraiser. But organizing an event of such a scale is really burning through the IES funds pretty quickly. So... We really hope that we can raise more donations so that we can actually make this the best event that it can possibly possibly be. So currently you have two fundraisers ongoing. One is via Indiegogo.com and the other is via Generosity.com. Uh, you have raised in total about $1,100 so far, your goal is 12500 So first of all, I wanted to ask you uh, why two different fundraisers uh, rather than having it all on one platform? Well, I've noticed that um, on Generosity, it, you can't actually accept different kinds of payments. You can only accept credit card payments while on Indiegogo you can accept all kinds of payments but you have to pay a specific fee over what you raise so I figure the people that can pay with credit card they can donate on generosity mm -hmm. because that will eventually lead to us having to pay less over the total raised amount and the people who can't pay with credit card can donate to the Indiegogo one mm -hmm. So both of your uh, campaigns on Indiegogo and Generosity are flexible funding campaigns, uh, which means that you will get uh, whichever amount of money you raise, uh, whether or not you hit that goal. Is that <coughs> correct? Yes. Yes. And uh, 
I would also be interested, uh, what will be uh, the primary ways in which that money will be spent for the event? Uh, what would you say are your main costs and uh, how will this money help? Well, that's a pretty simple question to answer, actually. The, one of the biggest costs, of course, is the use of the venue, which is about $2,000. Then we have the expenses of the plane tickets for our speakers, which are also quite expensive since uh, Liz and um, Oliver and Keith all have to come to Europe from the U.S., we, of course, have to pay for their, ho their hotel. We have to pay for the production of the footages of the Congress. We have to pay for the catering. Our guests have to eat something, of course. And all in all, it adds up. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. So uh, what has been so far the public reception uh, of the event and uh, what would you say uh, you are hoping to see happen in the weeks coming up to the event? Well, I've noticed that some people have been very enthusiastic about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that uh, other people have publicly shared it and endorsed it on social media. Yes. But I would really hope that this event, like becomes more of a trending topic in the whole community and that people understand that it's like a gateway to pu pushing the whole field into a mainstream scope of conversation where, you know, life extension and uh, gene therapies for humans have been a very fringe kind of science. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I saw that uh, there is definitely uh, quite a bit of enthusiasm for this. Uh, David Kekich of the Maximum Life Foundation has endorsed this event, and there have been various other organizations as well, the International Longevity Alliance, the Singularity Network, uh, heels, uh, yes, as well as, yes. of course, uh, Life Extension Advocacy Foundation, BioViva, and the SENS Research Foundation. So uh, it looks like there is a good amount of enthusiasm for it. Hopefully that will translate into some additional donations for you to help make this event run as well as it could. Uh, also, uh, what would you say are some other ways in which people can help? Well, I would say um, help us raise the awareness and help us explain to people why it's not only necessary to talk about these things, but to actually push the entire field of something interesting to the more general public and push the science out of the fringe. Mm -hmm. Make it more accessible and mainstream available to a much broader range of people. A lot of people right now don't even know that life extension or gene therapies are possible. Well, and I think that's a huge shame. Yes, indeed. So it seems like having a gentler introduction to the subject, uh, an introduction for non-experts starting with the basis of the technology that is already emerging today and then uh, venturing it into its broader implications would be a good approach to try. So I definitely salute you for that. Uh, is there any other major point that you think is necessary to communicate to those who are considering supporting the event or attending the event or uh, spending some time talking to others about it? Well, I've noticed on social media that a lot of people 
have been liking the posts about it. They've been enthusiastic in discussions and debates about it. They ask a lot of questions and it seems like that there is a buzz going, but I think that people do care, but I just hope that people care enough to give, to support the event actually uh, becoming as good as it can be. Mm -hmm. And where would you say this fits within the longer term mission of the Institute of Exponential Sciences? This is certainly uh, one of the most ambitious endeavors that the IES has attempted thus far. So uh, if this conference goes remarkably well, what are the opportunities that it opens up for the IES as an organization? Well, the idea of the IES is to do one yearly major conference on a specific exponential technology. For this year, we have chosen gene therapies, but I think that it's, as a long-term goal, it's a very good idea to do one of these technologies each year to cover the uh, latest innovations in the field and explore the possible applications of these innovations to help humanity. And I think that organizing such events really puts the IES on the map and allows us to also have a lot more credibility and well yeah yes well uh i do like the idea of having events that focus on particular areas of technological innovation i think it would be great if you could, in essence, increase the scientific literacy of the general population by having them exposed to these emerging advances and uh, having people realize, essentially, that healthy life extension isn't just uh, a dream, some sort of historic fantasy or some sort of science fiction, that there are definite ways by which it could happen within our lifetimes if there's enough interest, if there's enough funding, if there is enough uh, intellectual capital devoted to it. So uh, with that being said, I would encourage everyone to support the DNA Congress to uh, make the donations that would be necessary for this event to be as influential, as effective, uh, as successful as it can be. Uh, I have an announcement of my own. Uh, later today, I'm going to make a $100 donation to the DNA Congress as a way of continuing this momentum. And hopefully, that will also increase the visibility of these fundraisers to others. Oh, well, thank you very much, Kennedy. I'm very glad to accept your donation and I will do my utmost best to put it to very good use. Wonderful, wonderful. So with that, Damien, uh, thank you very much for uh, coming today to discuss the DNA Congress and how it fits in with the general goal of educating the public about emerging technologies and about life extension. And I wish you all the best for this event. Yeah. I just uh, also wanted to say that I am kind of coming down with a fever or something. So I may not have clarified everything as perfectly as I would have wanted to. But I just wanted to apologize for any... Uh, oh. lack of concise explanation of what I'm doing. I don't think there's a need to apologize. I think this will be a very informative resource for people to uh, look at in the coming weeks as they make their decisions about uh, whether to support the DNA Congress. And 
with that, thank you very much, Damien, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching. I really do hope that you consider supporting this unique and important event.